Hey everybody, we're going to be talking about 1st Nephi today, verse 1 specifically. And there's a lot to unwrap even in verse 1, so let's get started. As always, the opinions expressed in this video are my own personal opinions and not that of the church or any of its leaders. Just a little bit of context as we get into 1st Nephi. First Nephi is a first person narrative written by Nephi. A lot of times we think about it in the form of a journal, but really he's writing it 30 years after the fact that these things happen. So as he goes back, he's really highlighting the most important things that happened in the past 30 years. It begins around 600 BC. Um, it's known as the pivotal year in Jewish history. Uh, there were a lot of changes happening. A lot of people prophesying of the destruction of Jerusalem. A lot of people thinking those people were crazy. A monetary system had just been developed. Um, a lot of new things uh, were happening in the Jewish culture. Uh, there was a huge Greek influence on Palestine. A lot of different things were happening. All right, so let's look at verse one. Okay, so I, Nephi, having been born of goodly parents. One line in to the Book of Mormon, and to me, we have our first evidence or proof of the authenticity of the book. As I read through the Book of Mormon, that's what I'm looking for. I want to see, is there an argument one way or another? Can we find any proofs that the book came to be the way that Joseph said it did? Or is there another option? And I think in the first five lines, we can rule out the option that Joseph Smith made up the Book of Mormon. Listen to what we have here. I, Nephi. Now, Nephi, or Nephi, as the Egyptians would say it, is an Egyptian name. And the meaning of that name is goodly. So we have I, Nephi, or goodly, having been born of goodly parents. Now this is an Egyptian word that he's repeated in the Hebrew form just five words later. It's a distinct, obvious play on words. Nobody would catch unless they understood the translation of the word nephi in Egyptian, which we can say Joseph Smith did, but then you'd have to also say that he also understood Hebrew, and he also understood literary writing styles of the ancient Hebrew people that loved puns. This isn't uncommon for Hebrew writing to have puns or wordplay. In fact, it's even very, very common in the opening lines. And one place we learn that is in the Bible. If you look at this article from Gary A. Rensberg from Cornell University, second paragraph down, he says, one does not have to read far in the Bible to encounter wordplay. Indeed, the opening words of the Bible present an example. Bersit bara. In the beginning of creating, the author has constructed the story so that it begins with the same three letters that form the root of the verb create, so crucial to the story. So in the very opening line of the Bible, we see this wordplay happening where they use the root word create twice in a row. Nephi follows that exact same style in his opening line of his narrative, or now what we know as the Book of Mormon. So it's interesting to me that we can compare those two and see these are the people with the same beliefs, the same traditions, the same culture, writing in the same style. So I, Nephi, goodly, having been born of goodly parents, and we see the same thing in the Bible where they use the word create back to back. I'm positive that Joseph Smith didn't understand what he was translating at the time, that he didn't know that Nephi was Egyptian word meaning goodly. I don't know where he would have got that knowledge or if anyone uh, in the Western Hemisphere understood both Egyptian words and Hebrew wordplay, good enough to be able to construct a sentence like this to open the Book of Mormon. Um, later on in the verse, we see Nephi say, Having had a great knowledge of the goodness and the mysteries of God, therefore I make a record of my proceedings in my days. So he's going to make a record of his proceedings. This also is not uncommon. It was not only encouraged, but it was requisite that the Hebrew men or Jewish men would record all of their spiritual experiences. It was so important that there was even a room in the temple dedicated to such a thing. It gets even more interesting when we learn that uh, the most sacred things were plated in gold after the fact. We see this tradition carry over to the New World all the way down through to Mormon and Moroni, who compiled this book and plated it in gold. So just in verse 1, there's so many proofs and evidences that the Book of Mormon is exactly what it says it is, is an ancient record uh, written by people that were part of the covenant.